One. All right. We need to subtract these two fractions. How do we do that? How do we subtract these two fractions? We cannot just subtract these the way they are right this minute. We can't go like 3 minus 2 and 5 minus 7. That's not how subtracting fractions works. A lot of you have kind of given me some suggestions on finding a common denominator. Go ahead, Kaya. Okay, yeah. So I had people describe that, but thank you. I hadn't had heard the actual words of finding a common denominator. So do 5 and 7 have any factors in common? What? Okay, you're, you're thinking the wrong thing. You're giving me a multiple that they have in common. I want factors in common. Okay, let me just check on Becky really fast. <coughs> Okay, so we need to get a common denominator for three fifths and negatives two sevenths so that we can combine those together, right? So the common denominator or common multiple is 35. And the reason we just find it by multiplying 5 times 7 together is because 5 and 7 don't have any common factors other than the number 1, which doesn't really affect it. So when you have two denominators that have no factors in common, all you have to do is multiply those two numbers together and that gives you your common denominator. So our least common denominator for this problem is 35. So how are we going to turn this first fraction into 35? Good, so we multiply by 7 over 7. That way we're actually just multiplying by a value of 1 and we're not changing the value of the actual fraction. What do we do on this one? Five. Multiply by 5 over 5. Again, we are changing the denominator to 35, but we are not changing the actual value of the fraction because we're simply multiplying by 1. So that gives us 21 over 35 minus 10 over 35 because I have to multiply those numbers. So 7 times 3 and 7 times 5 and then 2 times 5 and 7 times 5. And then I go ahead and subtract. What is 21 minus 10? Now, do I subtract the denominators too? No, I just keep that common denominator. Then, if this can simplify, I should simplify it. Are there any numbers that divide into 11 and 35? There are not. So it does not simplify, so that's our answer, and we leave it like that. Let's use this example to write some steps that we can follow for doing problems like this. Step number one. We need to find a common denominator. So when you find a common denominator, sometimes it helps if you factor the denominators first, because then you can see if they have any common factors, and that will help you to find a least common denominator, hopefully. Um, do, do we have to get a least common denominator, or does any common denominator, is that okay? Any is okay, it just is that we'll have to reduce it later if we don't find the least common denominator. So I'm going to add the word least, because that makes it easier. Find the least common denominator. Is it okay if I abbreviate least common denominator with LCD from now on out? So least common denominator, okay? All right, to find a least common denominator, first we might want to factor the denominators so we can see if they have any factors in common. And then in order to make sure that all of the fractions have the same denominator, we multiply each fraction
by missing numbers to get our common denominator, right? So that's what we did when we multiplied this one by 7 over 7 and this one by 5 over 5. Okay. All right, so step one is getting that least common denominator. We find it, we multiply everything so we have the least common denominator. Now what do we do? What did we do next after we had that least common denominator? What did we do in this step right here? We just subtracted. If it has adding, you would add it. If it has subtracting, you subtract it. But you only add or subtract the numerators. Okay. And then step three, we didn't need to actually do. But it's good to think about because sometimes we need to do it. What did we say that we should always do last if we can? So simplify or reduce if possible. And if you've forgotten how to reduce. Um, remember that you always want things to be factored first and then you can reduce common factors. So I still have that little two instruction list over there you can refer to to help you remember how to simplify. Okay, so there's our instructions. Let's do a harder problem. move this up? How far can I move this? You can still see it. Okay, so we're going to do n over n squared plus 4n plus 4 plus 2 over n squared plus 4n plus 4. We're going to follow the same steps. Step number one, I heard Chase say something about that. Guess what? We already have an LCD. Why do we already have a least common denominator? Well, they can be factored, but do we even need to factor them right this second? Later we'll factor them, but we don't even need to right now because we can tell that they're the same, right? Yes. Don't they look exactly the same? So do we even need to do step one? Uh, well, step one was just looking at it and noticing that we don't really need to do it. So we're done with step one. Check. Okay, step two. What do we do for step two? It's right here. Add the numerators only. So we're going to take n plus 2, and the denominator stays the same. So we have n squared plus 4n plus 4. Okay. What's our last step? Okay, so simplify if possible. What's the first step of simplifying? First step of simplifying over there on the board. Factor. factor. Can I factor the numerator? No, I cannot factor the numerator, but can I factor the denominator? Yes. What does the denominator factor into? N so n times n is n squared. Good. Plus 2 plus 2, because 2 times 2 is 4 and 2n plus 2n adds up to 4n in the middle. This is what we call a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Nope. Can we reduce anything? N plus 2 squared. We can get rid of an n plus 2 on the top. And we can get rid of an n plus 2 on the bottom. Uh-oh, it looks like we have nothing left on the top. But really just n plus 2 over n plus 2 turned into 1 turned into 1, and so what do we leave on the top? One. A 1 on the top, 
And then what's on the bottom? N plus 2. So that is our simplified answer. And yes, the 1 is required when it's in the numerator like that. Okay, let's do another example. <coughs> 9 over m plus 2 plus 8 over m minus 7. We are still taking notes. It's not time to start talking, please. Okay, so we need to get a common denominator first. What will it be? Perfect, Chase. Is this number a completely different number than that number? No. Yes, it is. Because m represents some number that we don't know. Let's imagine that m is 0. That would mean that this is a positive 2 and that's a negative 7. Those are completely different numbers. Or what if m equals 10? That would mean that this is a 12 and this is a 3. Those are completely different numbers. So we have to treat these completely separate from each other. So that means our least common denominator is m plus 2 times m minus 7. And we're not going to actually multiply that out yet. We can multiply it out later when we're done simplifying if it's still left. Okay? So, we now need to take and multiply each fraction by the factor that it's missing to get that least common denominator. What piece is this fraction missing to be this? It is missing the factor m minus 7, correct. So we are going to multiply the top of the fraction by m minus 7 and the bottom of the fraction by an m minus 7. Okay, what's missing on our second fraction? m plus 2. So we're going to multiply the numerator by m plus 2 and the denominator times an n plus 2. That gives us 9 times m minus 7 over m minus 7 times n plus 2 and 8 times m plus 2 over m minus 7 times m plus 2 do we need to distribute the numerators? Yes, we do. What do we do to distribute them? What am I talking about? We're going to take 9 times m and 9 times 7. What's 9 times m? 9m. And then what's 9 times 7? Negative 63, because it's a negative 7, which I didn't say the first time, but yeah. Now we can just add the numerators together as we're doing this process, because they have the same denominator now. So 8 times m, eight so I'm going to add that in. And then 8 times 2 is 16, and that's all over m minus 7, m plus 2. Okay. Now we just need to simplify this by combining like terms. Do you remember our self-starter last week? Yeah. Combine like terms. What can we add together? 9m and 8m, which is 17m. And then negative 63 and positive 16. negative 47. Now can we, are we going to be able to simplify that with either of these factors? No. no. So this cannot be simplified with either of those factors. So if you want to, you can now multiply those factors together. You don't have to though. It's perfectly <laughs> fine to just leave your answer like this and that's actually easier to do. But if you want to, I'm going to go backwards a little bit here or maybe I'll just write on the lower paper here you can actually multiply that out so that you have m times m is m squared negative 7m plus 2m is negative 5m and then negative 7 times 2 is negative 14 and that would be your final answer okay
I think you might be okay with what we're doing today. The last thing I want you to do, though, is try a couple of problems on your own right on your notes. Okay? So right now, on your notes, I want you to try these two problems. Then I will give you a paper that will allow you to check your answers on those two problems. And then the paper that I give you that you can use to check your answers on these two problems then has your homework on the back. And your homework is 22 problems on the back of the paper that has these problems on it, okay? Um, so right now, I'd like you to work on these. I'd like you to take a break if you need it and go get a drink and such, okay? I'm going to wander around and make sure you're working on these. And then in a few minutes, I will come around and bring you the, the answers to this as well as your homework paper. And the rest of the time which might be too much time, is yours to just work on this assignment.